Well, here we are. We're going to do Immunology 4. And, of course, that follows Immunology 3, where we talked about complement activation. And so then during Immunology 3, I said, hey, I'm in 4, I'm going to talk about equine neonatal isoerythrolysis. Well, let me break that down for you. And of course, you know, equine, we're talking about in horses, neonatal, a horse that's just born, a foal, in other words, and then isoerythrolysis. Iso means the same. Urethro refers to urethrocytes, otherwise known, right, as red blood cells. And then lysis is the breakup of those red blood cells. And then NI is a uh, acronym, I guess. Sometimes you'll see it listed as a neonatal isoerythrolysis. So in the newborn foal, we're going to have rupture of its red blood cells that, if left unchecked and serious enough, could lead to death or would definitely lead to death. Unfortunately, I have some pictures of some dead foals, but uh, to learn what some parts look like. Okay, anyway, now there's another name for this condition. And actually, maybe it's a broader term. But anyway, hemolytic, the breakdown of blood, especially red blood cells of the newborn, okay? So sometimes you'll see it listed as hemolytic disease of the newborn. Well, I'm going to show you this picture here. I guess I'll just, oh, it goes under there. That's fine. I just wanted to show you a picture of a foal that's in danger of having this condition. And we're going to find out that mother there on the right is making antibodies that will pass in the colostrum, go into the foal, and we'll talk about that in a little second. It gets in the foal's red blood cells, now the uh, antibodies, and destroys it. So one of the things you do is do not let the foal nurse its mother for a couple days. So I, I wanted to show that picture. But it's important in most cases for to not separate the two because they need to bond. So the foal still has to be in the presence of the mare, but you cannot let the foal nurse because in those rare cases where this happens, those bad antibodies are in the colostrum. So of course, you know, I'm a visual person, so I've found some images, and if I blow them up a little bit, they get a little hazy, but it still works okay. We start up here in the top left. Uh, during pregnancy, for some reason, the mare started making antibodies against the surface proteins on the foal's red blood cells. This is happening before the foal is born. So then the foal absorbs antibodies against its own red blood cells from the mare's colostrum. So now I got to remind you that during pregnancy, no antibodies pass from the mother to the foal. There's no transplant, transplacental transfer of immunoglobulins. In all the large domestic animals, that's true. Horses, pig, sheep, cattle, goats. But in dogs and cats, if you remember right, or we remember from earlier, we did say in some lesson there early on that they do have in, immunoglob, in, immunoglobulins that pass the placenta. And it happens actually in humans as well. Back to this thing. Okay, so then in the mare's colostrums are these antibodies that are going to attach to the foal's red blood cells. Well, something happens here. This, it's not quite as simple as this picture shows because when the foal ingests colostrum, most of the nutrients are not taken up to, into the blood intact. Remember, the digestive thing has to break it down to monomers. 
but there are some special cells in the newborn foal or all the neonates that allow intact immunoglobulins, especially IgG, to pass through and get into the blood of the foal. So these are antibodies that are found in the colostrum. Those antibodies are made by mom, the mare. The foal consumes colostrum. Those antibodies are absorbed intact across the gut wall. And this only is allowed for about 24 hours, maybe 36 at the most, but we can just say, let's say 24. But whenever they're inside the blood, then they're going to attach to the blood. And if you remember, we're going to get hemo hemolysis. And you can go back to immunology 3 if you need to review that. Okay? So let me get this out of the way and show you one more picture. This I'm not sure how much more it adds. But they actually talk about the types of blood. And I'm not going to enlarge that anymore. But the point is, when the foal is in utero, the mare gets exposed to some of the red blood cell proteins or membranes that from the foal. Now remember, the foal is actually a foreign body. The foal is half mom, half dad. And dad is foreign to the mare. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of blood types. I'm not going to get into that. Some places say there's seven blood types. I've, ever, I've also seen 16 blood types. I think it depends on how you divide and subdivide. The kicker, though, is once the foal is born, there's antibodies in the colostrum that get into the foal's blood, and that can be a problem if the antibodies are looking for foal's red blood cells. Now, I don't have much to say at the moment, but I wanted to make sure I focused on this. There are screening tests that you can do, and they should be done within about two weeks of foaling, according to what I've read. Now, of course, you need to get a veterinarian and do all the right stuff, but I'm just doing an introduction here. There are screening tests, so then you would know that when the foal is born that it cannot nurse its mom. It's important to get colostrum because colostrum has a lot of antibodies. But, you know, the foal can get colostrum from any mare on the farm if it's good colostrum. And it's better to get colostrum from your own farm because then whatever pathogens are in the area, the mare that's donating the colostrum probably has antibodies in that colostrum. Colostrum can be frozen, and I won't get into that right now. But the point here is there are screening tests that can be done, and most people probably should have it done, not assume that it's not going to happen. So now, just let's just look at a few images here of foals that have had isourethrolysis. And I think I've got two pictures, unfortunately, of foals that have died. And I'm going to bring this one down. That doesn't look like a live foal to me. And they're trying to show the jaundice. Because if you get enough red blood cells breaking down, there's bilirubin that's going to accumulate in the body faster than it can be eliminated. And it gives you this jaundice or icterus. We talked about that before. So if you look at these membranes here, yellowish icteric they would call that then the fat gets kind of yellowish because there's so much bilirubin and obviously this is at a necropsy unfortunately i don't like these pictures but they are educational then finally this third picture shows a mare or a foal sorry a foal that's living and urinating and they're collecting the urine because this animal with so many red blood cells breaking up, you get a condition called hemoglobinuria. Hemoglobin from broken red blood cells. Urea in the urine. And one bad thing about that is that hemoglobin is a nephrotoxin. Uh, 
I guess I'll see I'm spelling this as I go. <laughs> there we go. A nephrotoxin. So hemoglobin is a nephrotoxin. I did spell that right, I think. And that's not good. Now, if there's enough red blood cells breaking, of course, we previously saw the hemoglobinuria and the jaundice. I thought this was another nice little picture. Uh, they're going to give the full red blood cells, but they're going to be washed and they're going to be collected from the dam. I don't know all the details of this procedure, but I, you know, the idea is they're washed and they're probably washed because then they'll have less immunoglobulins from the blood of the mare because remember that's originally where those cholesterol antibodies came from. And then we talked about these hematocrit tubes long ago and if this is truly a hematocrit from a foal with isoerythral lysis, I'll, remind, I'll refresh your memory. Remember you look at the total column height and a normal hematocrit would have the red blood cells up to about 45%. So I'm doing this, you know, from scratch here, but the level of red blood cells should be here, not down here. So very anemic. Why is this? Because a lot of the red blood cells are being ruptured and they're not around. And that liquid on top looks pretty yellow, right? Billy Rubin. Here's a full getting washed red blood cells from its mom and it's the treatment of you know neonatal isoerythrolysis. I'm not familiar with the washing procedure but I'm going to say they probably wash almost everything away except the red blood cells and then reconstitute it in I'm going to guess saline but I could be wrong but anyway getting red blood cells that's the kicker here and then maybe one thing more to add you know, I just noticed this while I was looking at this picture. Look at those yellow mucous membranes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and I've got to make one more couple points here. Just remember, I lost my notes here. Okay, here's we've, here we've got a foal that it probably doesn't have isoerythrolysis, right? Because they probably did the screening test and said, okay, the foal cannot nurse from mom and obviously it looks like mom here is on the right the foal is here they're living together because they need to bond i think it'd be wrong to take them away from each other and you can see somebody is milking the mare because although that colostrum can't be fed to that foal it's got to be removed because mammary glands have to be evacuated to make more milk so you got to remove the milk, but you can't let the foal do it. And then there's one word I haven't said yet, and uh, that is gut closure. So let me write this down and then explain it. Okay, now this seems weird, gut closure. It's quite a term, so bear with me. So in the normal case, the colostrum is rich in immunoglobulin G especially. The foal would nurse the, the mammary gland, of course, and get the colostrum. The antibodies would not be digested in the gut lumen like they normally would be. The gut isn't really ready to digest much. But those antibodies, which are proteins, can get absorbed within the first 24 hours through the gut wall into the blood. But after 24 hours, there's a phenomenon that's called gut closure. The special cells that are letting those immunoglobulins come in intact basically don't exist anymore. They're, they're gone after about 24 hours, maybe 36. Well, then there's still probably antibody coming in from the milk for a while. But all those then would be digested in the foal's intestinal tract usually just like a protein. I'm not sure how good it is digesting protein when it's that young, but 
they're not going to get absorbed. And why are they not? I'm talking about the antibodies. Why will they not get absorbed? Because gut closure happened in the foal. It has nothing to do with the mare. It, gut closure is a neonatal phenomenon. About 24 hours after birth, those cells, special cells in the gut wall are gone. And after that, any immunoglobulins consumed are digested just like a protein. And last but not least, here's a list of the fine illustrations I used. See you later.